Welcome to St. Philip's Church, located on West 134th Street in Harlem, on the island of Manhattan in New York City. My name is Mark G. Barksdale. I'm a member of St. Philip's Church, uh, and I'm actually a third generation member. Of my grandmother was a member of the church. By profession, I'm an architect uh, and uh, urban planner. St. Philip's Episcopal Church was founded in 1809 by a group of African-American persons who had belonged to Trinity Church in uh, Lower Manhattan on Wall Street, and they became dissatisfied with the type of segregation that was practiced at the church, They're having to sit in separate pews, so they decided to form their own church, and so they broke away from Trinity Church and started their own church, and uh, eventually it culminated in a building in 1819 on Center Street in Lower Manhattan. And then progressively as the island grew, the population of the island grew, uh, and the congregation expanded and moved up the island, the church had four different homes progressively going northward up the island until finally it, it uh, ended here on 134th Street in Harlem uh, between 7th and 8th Avenues in 1911. Uh, and that was under the uh, leadership of the rector at the time, Hutchins Chu Bishop. Well, the architect for St. Philip's Church was Bertner Woodson Tandy, who was actually a member of the church. He designed the church in 1910, and construction was completed in 1911. Bertner Tandy was the first African-American architect to be licensed in New York State. He was in partnership with another architect named George Washington Foster, Foster was the first African-American licensed architect in New Jersey, so they're both pioneering architects. While Vert Tandy was a student at Cornell University in 1909, he helped found Alpha Phi Alpha, which is the oldest African-American Greek fraternity in the world. Most people would refer to it as neo-Gothic. Uh, I've seen references also to it as being Spanish Gothic. And that was popular at the time in, in the early 20th century. It's somewhat untraditional in its design in that it uh, doesn't have a, a central door at the entrance. There are two side doors to the entrance and um, the materials that are used for the church are somewhat uh, unusual for the time also. The, the main material for the, the walls is a, a tan Roman brick. Usually for most churches at that time, the walls were plaster, but in this case, um, the brick is exposed in the interior of the church, so that's somewhat of a unique feature. In addition to the, uh, to the tan Roman brick, there are also precast stone columns. We find polished terrazzo marble along the aisles of the church, and then in the pew areas, the flooring material is wood. We have beautiful timber arches for the roof, which are original to the church from 1911, and uh, it's certainly something that visitors to the church take a look at when they enter. As well as uh, the chandeliers, which are specially designed for the church. The chandeliers are original. They've been uh, reconditioned, but they are original to the church. At the base of the roof arches, there are busts of the Twelve Apostles and four bishops of the Episcopal Church. The church has beautiful stained glass windows, which are very high and let natural light into the church, which is a feature of Gothic architecture. We have a glassed-in screen separating the, uh, the main nave of the church from the porch or portico of the church. On the exterior of the church, Typical for Gothic churches are gargoyles to ward off evil spirits. As one enters the church on the left side, there's a plaque to St. Philip's first rector, Reverend Peter Williams. The general layout of the church itself was designed to be a progression through the Christian light. As we enter the church, our first stop is the baptismal font, which is the first stop along life's Christian journey. The baptismal font uh, is cast stone, and behind the baptismal font is a painting of the Madonna and Child, and on the uh, wall is a plaque honoring 
Hutchins Chu Bishop, who was the fourth rector of St. Philip's Church from 1886 to 1937. Next, we arrive at the Children's Chapel, which is the next step in uh, a Christian's life's journey, uh, which has a painting of uh, the Black Madonna and Child. And we have two pews. Children grow in their Christian life uh, here at the Children's Chapel. As they grow older and become adults, we proceed to the altar where ceremonies such as confirmation, communion, and marriage take place. And as you notice, you'll see the marble steps leading up to the altar and uh, tile mosaic flooring for the altar area, chancel area, and the altar itself, which is made of Italian Carrera marble. This altar was actually transported from the, uh, an earlier home of the church on 25th Street in Manhattan and was uh, transported here when this building was built in 1911. Also original to the church is the brass altar rail where one comes to take communion. The ceiling collapsed in 1996. That was a major disruption for a while, but it was rebuilt. There was extensive damage to the organ and the organ pipes. Parts of the altar were also were built as a result of that ceiling collapse. We're approaching the pulpit now, where every rector since Father Hudson's true bishop has given their own sermons. You'll notice the uh, wood tracery of the canopy over the pulpit, the ornate uh, brass fittings of the pulpit stand, and the marble base. Behind the pulpit is a wall engraving to the memory of Father Hutchins Chu Bishop, who was rector of St. Philip's from 1886 to 1933, and his son, Shelton Hale Bishop, who was rector of St. Philip's from 1933 to 1957. Just to the right of the altar area is uh, St. Elizabeth's Chapel, which is dedicated to the memory of St. Elizabeth, who was the founder of the Protestant Sisters of Charity in the 1800s. Proceeding from that chapel to the right side of the altar, we proceed northward along the aisle to the last stop in life's religious journey, which would be the Mortuary Chapel. And that is where caskets are laid out after a person passes on. It's important to note that in 2009, the church celebrated its 200th anniversary, uh, its bicentennial, and it's been serving God and community for 200 years now.